right so i am actually um in the lab right now and um, i'll be working late so that is why i would not be able to make a video in the evening uh, and uh, <coughs> So basically, I picked out three questions from TIFR entrance exam, and these all came in the 2017 entrance exam in the TIFR paper. And I just have picked out these questions because the questions, I mean, the method to solve these questions are very is is very easy, and um, you know, only if you have a <coughs> uh, if you have good grasp on your concepts, you'll be easily able to solve such questions. So now let's look at this first question. We have lithium aluminium hydride. So, in uh, so lithium aluminum hydride plus this uh, 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 quaternary, quaternary ammonium salt in presence of toluene, what kind of product does it give? So, so we have to write down all the kind, all the byproducts along with the product for this particular uh, reagents. Now, lithium aluminum hydride, you write it as Li plus and AlH4 minus. Okay. And this triethylamine, uh, I mean, uh, sorry, not triethylamine, uh, this quaternary ammonium salt, you write it as NH3, NH3, ET, okay, and then there's a positive charge on the nitrogen, and this is stabilized by chloride minus. So they have framed the question smartly. Over here, they haven't shown the charges. If you see this molecule, they haven't shown the charges. So if if you if you look carefully, for there are four points with this nitrogen. So there is a positive positive charge on the nitrogen, and we have Cl minus. Okay, stabilizing it. And so the first thing is aluminium hydride. Lithium aluminium hydride is a hydride donor. We all know. Okay, so it will donate H minus. It is going to donate H minus. Now this H minus will what will it do is this H minus will attack the most acidic proton. This H minus will attack the most acidic proton. Now in this case, in this particular case, there is nothing to reduce, so it is going to attack the most acidic proton. Now the most acidic proton is this proton. The hydrogen attached to the nitrogen is the most acidic proton. So this H minus is going to attack this nitrogen. So if I draw the structure for nitrogen. Uh, we have three hydrogens okay we have three hydrogens and we have this ethyl group okay and positive charge which is stabilized by chloride minus so this H minus is going to abstract one of the hydrogens and we'll get uh, H2 so one of the products will be H2 the second product is now this uh, hydrogen donates the electrons back to the nitrogen. Now nitrogen is not positively charged; it will be neutrally charged. So now we have um, uh, just a second. Right. So um, now along with this we have NH2ET. So this will give us NH2ET. Now the nitrogen is neutral. It is not positively charged because it has now three bonds. Now what is going to happen is this lithium plus and this Cl minus will interact and form an ionic bond and it will be precipitated out as lithium chloride LiCl. The solvent over here is toluene. Now toluene has no role to play because it is a aprotic solvent. What I mean by aprotic solvent, it means that uh, I mean there is no ionizable hydrogens present. There is no acidic hydrogen present in toluene, so it it will not react in the it will not react with the reagents the, the given reagents. So we got LiCl and we got H2. Now what is left is NH2ET, and along with that, once from AlH4 minus we took out a hydride ion uh, hydride H minus. Now it is left as AlH3. Okay, it is left as AlH3. Now what is going to happen is now this AlH3 is electron deficient, right? Because aluminium has only six electrons in its octet. Whereas if you look at NH2ET, this NH2ET has lone pair of electrons. This nitrogen over here has lone pair of electrons. So this AlH3 is electron deficient, and this NH2 has lone pair of electrons. 
so they will interact and they will form a co uh, coordinate bond so we have NH2 and uh, we have ethyl okay this will form a coordinate bond with uh, with ALH3 so you can show it like this this forming a kind of like a complex with ALH3 so this these are the three products that we have H2 LICL and NH2 ET ALH3 like this you can show so this is the answer so you know just by going with the general flow of the concepts you can easily predict the answer now let's move, move on to the next question the next question is a compound with molecular formula C5H12O2 has strong IR absorption at 3300 to 3400 cm inverse the proton MR spectrum showed three singlets at 0 0.9, 0 0.345 and delta 0 0.9, 3.45 and 3.2 ppm with relative areas 3 is to 2 is to 1 okay now the first thing that I tell you is whenever you look at the NMR spectra and those of you who are following my videos you will know that it shows three singlets so first of all the, the you write you see the proton NMR now the proton NMR shows three singlets so <clears throat> there are three different protons and they all are giving singlets in the ratio 3 is to 2 is to 1 so you first work on this particular example only okay we, we, we will need rest of the data when we cannot solve the question with the help of proton NMR so always go for the proton NMR first now if we look at this compound 1,5 pentane diol so we have 1,5 pentane diol okay so CH2 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 okay and uh, CH2 1 2 3 4 5 this is our compound with OH on the, both the ends 1,5 pentane diol this is us this is a compound so if you see do we have three different protons yes we have three different protons one is this OH proton this is a symmetrical molecule right so these protons will give the same signal then we have two hydrogens this hydrogen over here and this hydrogen over here will give the same signal and these two hydrogens will give the same signal but this CH2 will give a different signal so we have one signal for this OH one signal one signal for this hydrogen 2, one signal for this hydrogen 3 and one signal for this hydrogen 4. So there are four different signals that we'll get but according to the proton NMR spectrum there are only three singlets being observed and plus it will not be a singlet because this will be split into a triplet as this will be split into a pentet. We have two hydrogens over here and two hydrogens over here. So it will never be a singlet. So this is not the right answer. You can cancel this out the first option let's look at the second or uh, fourth option two four pentane diol okay so the same compound if i will draw ch2 uh, we have a ch3 uh, sorry i'll draw it over here ch3 two four pentane diol right ch ch2 ch2 and one two three four five ch3 and we have oh over here right and one oh over here now again if you look at this compound this, there is only one hydrogen over here sorry now if you look at this compound again you cannot get three singlets because this proton will this will be split into a doublet this will be split into a sextet six lines because we have three hydrogens over here and two hydrogens over here five so it will be sp split into a sextet you do not consider this OH because OH is a ionizable hydrogen so you do not consider the splitting of this OH and uh, along with that you see um, so we are definitely not getting three singlets so this is also not the right answer right now let's look at 2,2-dimethyl-1,3-propane-diol okay 2,2-dimethyl-1,3-propane-diol so if I draw the structure for this um, so we have 
कार्बन 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 टू टू डाइमिथाइल सो वी हैव टू मिथाइल ग्रुप्स ओवर हेयर एंड वन ओवर हेयर सी एच थ्री सी एच थ्री ओके एंड वी हैव वन ओ एच एंड वन ओ एच ओवर हेयर सो दिस इज टू टू डाइमिथाइल वन थ्री प्रोपेन डायल दिस इज द स्ट्रक्चर एंड वी हैव टू हाइड्रोजन ओवर हेयर and two hydrogens over here now if you see this satisfies all the conditions why because first of all all these protons will give singlets only this will give a singlet this will also give a singlet and oh will also give a singlet and it is given that the intensities are in the ratio 3 is to 2 is to 1 so if you see uh, these methyls we have six methyl groups so six methyl groups of Of uh, six six protons, which are similar in nature, then we have these two protons, this and this. These are also similar in nature. So six is to four, and then we have two OH protons, one over here and one over here. So six is to four is to two. So it is saying rel relative in relative intensity is three is to two is to one. So if you calculate the relative intensity, it will come out to be three is to two. Is, if you divide all of them by two, three is to two is to one, right? so this satisfies this condition as well so we are getting three singlets uh, with the uh, with the uh, chemical shift values of 0.9 3.45 and 3.2 okay and along with that it says that the 13 cnmr spectrum shows three signals all higher than 100 ppm so if you see the uh, there are three different kinds of carbon one is this carbon one is this carbon methyl carbon one is ch2 methane carbon and then this things this carbon as well so in the proton nmr you will not observe any peak for this particular carbon this one over here because uh, it is uh, because uh, like it does not have a proton attached to it but in the carbon nmr in the 13c nmr you will see a signal for this particular carbon as well so the correct answer is option number c okay and how do you know there is a oh group because in the question it says it shows a strong ir at 3300 to 3400 cm inverse this corresponds to oh peak also it also says that addition of D T d2o to the sample eliminates the lower field signal lower field signal means down field signal so the oh group will show a down field signal around 3.45 ppm and this will be eliminated on addition of d2o because this oh is like i told you this proton is ionizer ionizable oh proton so when we add d2o it will convert into od from oh it will convert into od and then the od does not show any proton signal so addition of d2o to the sample eliminates the lower field signal lower field or the down field signal okay right so the next question. so basically what my idea of uh, you know explaining this question was because i just wanted you to know that how without any information also or with the help of proton nmr alone you can solve the question they just give you extra data to confuse you so just for when you are doing it for the first time always try and find out the structure or pre pre uh, predict the structure with the help of proton nmr okay now the next question is again a, it looks you know a odd question but it's a pretty simple question so cesium fluoride on addition to this particular compound that i have drawn over here gives benzene it will give benzene so i'll draw the benzene over here so addition of cesium fluoride this is a very popular reaction and it is used in synthetic organic chemistry a lot the cesium fluoride you know basically it it can exist as cs cesium plus right and f minus cesium plus and f minus so this f minus you know um, interacts with this sime3 silicon trimethyl okay and this cesium plus is interacting with this oxygen oso2 cf3 because this cf3 is a electron withdrawing group and oxygen itself is also an electron withdrawing group so uh, you know um, what happens is um, see i can't explain the mechanism right now but uh, basically when you are given groups like these and you are given cesium fluoride uh, so this cesium interacts with this oxygen and this f minus interacts with the silicon and with the result of this what happens is this bond 
basically gets broken and we have uh, a benzyne generated okay so we'll have a ben benzyne generated or you can imagine this this bond breaking like this okay and this group leaving and why is this group leaving uh, okay yeah uh, i just remembered so this cf3 is electron withdrawing group right and uh, the, the, the addition of this cf3 group to this particular uh, compound what it does is it stabilizes the oxygen o, o minus that is formed so this silicon bond silicon carbon bond breaks we get the benzene okay and this bond then dissociates to form o minus so2 cf3 now this is a very good leaving group and this becomes a very good leaving group because of the attachment of this uh, trifluoro uh, trifluoro group along with this so2 group right so this makes this uh, particular uh, group a very good leaving group because of which we get this benzene even though benzenes are not stable and very reactive yet we are getting this group because of the stability of this o minus so2 cf3 so we get a benzene in the first step so this is our compound a that is our benzene now in the next step what is happening is we are adding this heterocycle now this heterocycle is being added and this gives Diels-Alder reaction okay this heterocycle is going to give Diels-Alder reaction so what is going to happen is this benzene is very reactive this double bond will approach this carbon it is a concerted mechanism right and then this double bond will attack back and what it will look like is so basically the compound that is generated is this and we have an oxygen this is the compound so like a norborane we have a norborane right like right this this is our norborane right similarly in in this particular case over here we have oxygen so our oxygen will be there above the plane and if you can if you draw the 2d structure for this uh, molecule it will look something like this so we have a benzene ring okay and uh, we have another ring okay with this oxygen above the plane so it will show it with a pole bond oxygen and then like this so this is going to be the product right uh, I mean I it was just this is not the correct structure uh, this one this one that I have drawn is not the correct structure it is just a visualization so that you can understand what is going to what is what is happening right uh, anyway so this is this correct structure so this benzene uh, undergoes diels alder reaction with this heterocycle where this bond approaches this bond and then this bond approaches this bond like that it's a concerted mechanism that is taking place and once this happens uh, we have a double sorry i missed out a double bond we have a double bond here as well okay and uh, once this takes place we get our product which is this molecule over here so you can see the the, the questions that are asked are pretty, pretty uh, very simple pretty simple and uh, i guess you know if your concepts are good if you have done uh, even a little bit of hard work you and you apply your mind you will be able to solve questions from tifr okay